Hello everyone and welcome to the Meleha Valley in Malta. I have been staying here for the last few days which makes me a very lucky lady. Malta is a very small island in the Mediterranean Sea, about 80 kilometers south from the tip of the boot of Italy. This island is 316 square kilometers and has only 450,000 people, which makes it very different from London. Even though she may be small, she is a country all on her own. There has been some pottery found on this island that proves that Malta was settled over 7,200 years ago. It is said that Stone Age hunters and farmers were the first to settle here. Back then, there used to be animals such as dwarf elephants and dwarf hippos that are about the size of a big dog. After spending so many glorious days here, I'm going to find it very difficult to leave. It has such a relaxed atmosphere with lovely, lovely people. Why don't I show you some of the places that I've been the last few days? Come along! Valletta. Valletta is the main town in Malta. It has stunning architecture and many shops and markets to buy funky little things. I bought a figurine made out of a walnut. Valletta originally was called the city built for gentlemen by gentlemen. Valletta can thank the Knights of St. John for its formation. They planned the city as a place to take care of injured soldiers during the Crusades in Europe in the 16th century. If we fast forward a few hundred years up to the 1940s during World War II, Malta was the most bombed country in all of Europe during the war. Valletta took a large battering. Still to this day you can see some of the damage that was caused, but that does not stop this town from shining with charm and character. The Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon is a very popular place to visit because of its truly outstanding views. You can find it on the little island of Camino that is a quick ferry ride from the main island. It is hard to see where the water stops and the crystal sky begins. The water is perfectly clear so you can see the beautiful white sands underneath. I made sure to bring my goggles so I could see the underwater life swimming freely. This little island of Camino doesn't have any roads, only places to walk and hike. Only a few people live on this tiny island. Another alcove similar to this is called the Blue Grotto. This is on the main island of Malta. There are myths that mermaids used to live here, and it is not hard to believe with the beauty that I saw. Water splashing against the rocks with all different kinds of blue and green dancing in the waves. I was just waiting for a sparkle or a shimmer of a tail. Alas, I was not in luck. Okay, why don't we pause here and we can write some super sentences. Have a look at this. I can see the aquamarine sky pierce into the deep blue sea. What can you see? On your whiteboards or some paper, write down as many super sentences that you can about this magnificent scenery. Temples. In Malta, there are some megalithic temples. Megalithic describes large stone structures built without the use of mortar or concrete, meaning that it stands on its own. Can you remember another stone structure that we visited? Stonehenge! The stones just stand in their formation by the way they are positioned and the weight of them. We visited a temple called Hagakim. It dates back to the years between 3600 and 3200 BCE, making it one of the world's most ancient religious sites. It holds the largest megalith on the island, and on the inside of the temple are altars that are in the shape of mushrooms. In one of the temples is an epileptic hole that on the sunrise of the first day of summer, the summer solstice, the rays shine through the hole and light up a stone slab inside the chamber. 
Masserschlock. I went to a beautiful little fishing town called Masserschlock. It is very well known for having colourful boats in the harbour. They call these boats losers. Around 3,200 people live in this village. In the past, they all would have been fishermen. As well as looking lovely, this village has a lot of history dating back to the 9th century BCE. This village was used as a port that many people landed in. On a hill in the village, Bronze Age tools have been found, meaning that many people have called this place home for thousands of years. I have seen so much beauty in this country this week. One of my favourite moments was watching the boats resting on the water in the fishing village, seeing the vibrant buildings in the background. When a breeze would come along, it would ripple the water, making the reflections move. What I'm wanting you to do this week is either some drawing or some painting. Focusing on the reflections, I'm going to show you some different mediums of how people have shown water reflections, and then your class can decide which ones will work for you. Things to focus on. Does the shape of the boat or the building change when it is reflected in the water? Do the colours stay the same or do they get lighter? What happens to any words on the boat or building? What happens to a symmetrical object when it gets reflected? Maybe before you start your art, you can get a bucket or a tray of water and see how different objects reflect on that water. It might help. Now, teachers, please make sure that you send some photos of the finished work or even the process along the way. I cannot wait to see what you've done. And also remember, head on over to the website or to the social media pages so you can always be up to date with what we're doing. Now I'm going to soak up as much sun before I head back to London. I've had a wonderful time and I hope you have as well. See you soon! Thanks for watching! Why not continue learning by clicking on one of these lesson videos? And make sure to click that subscribe button. Happy travels!